So the, the entirety of the human body is a metabolic hybrid in that the body is largely burning fuel from two sources. It is burning blood glucose or sugar, blood sugar, or it's burning fat. Those are the two main fuels for the body by extension. Now the brain was an exception. The brain is glucose or ketones, and, but I'll get to where the ketones come from. The rest of the body isn't really relying on ketones as much as fats or glucose or blood sugar. Insulin is what decides which fuel is used. So as much as the metabolic engine has two fuel sources, insulin will decide which one is opened and which one is closed. If insulin is high, the body is sugar burning. And you can measure this in the whole body level by measuring the amount of o uh, oxygen and CO2 that the body is producing. Because different biochemistry or the burning of the fuels will produce a different amount of CO2. So if I'm burning glucose, I might be producing more CO2. Yes, yeah, so we could hook you up to something called an indirect calorimeter and measure that your RER, the respiratory exchange ratio, the balance between CO2 and oxygen would go higher. So we, we increase your insulin. Like if I infused you with insulin in the next few minutes, we would see that your RER would go up and we'd say, boy, you're sugar burning. Or we allow insulin to come down and then the RER goes down, which is reflective of fat burning. So it's insulin that determines whether the body is sugar burning or fat burning. Now, when insulin has been low for about 16 or so hours, something interesting starts happening at the liver. So the liver, with insulin being low, is burning a lot of fat, including its own fat that the liver can store. The liver can store fat, but also fat coming from fat cells. Because if insulin is low, the fat cells are just leaking out fat to be burned by the body. And because insulin is low, the liver keeps burning it. And the liver essentially burns, continues to burn so much fat that it, it fills its own needs. It meets its own needs and says to itself, hey, I don't need to keep burning fat. I have all the energy I need. I'm, I'm doing great. But it can't stop burning fat because insulin is low. And if insulin stays low, fat burning keeps going. And so- Because the body doesn't have enough glucose. Well, it's acting, yeah, so in this sense, it's doing it to help replace the glucose that isn't coming in. That's yeah. what the value of the ketone. So as the liver is continuing to burn fat, it essentially gets to a point of fat burning where it's burning more fat than it needs and that excess, if you will, is what becomes ketones. So ketones are kind of a metabolic release valve for the liver cell to say, I, I can't, I don't know what to do with all this fat burning. Okay, I know what I'm gonna do. There's not a lot of glucose coming in. And so the brain may start to get hungry. So I'm gonna start making ketones. And so ketones are nothing more than a product of a lot of fat burning. And anyone who even fasts for 24 hours you wake up that next morning, you're in some degree of ketosis. Lest anyone think it's an extreme thing. People are going in and out of ketosis, ideally, often. Now, why do I say ideally? It's because ketones are, as we've already outlined, perhaps the best fuel for the brain. The brain thrives on ketones. You can take a person with early stage Alzheimer's disease and have them go through a series of cognitive tests and they do horribly on them. Like one example is you ask the patient with Alzheimer's to draw the face of an analog clock, a circle with one, two through 12, and then some hands on it. And it is utter chaos. This is published reports. You then put them into ketosis, ask them, can you please draw the face of a clock? It's still sloppy, but it is absolutely the face of a clock. You ask them when they're not in ketosis to try to tie their shoelaces. They can't think through the puzzle of tying the shoelaces. Ask them to do it again when they're in ketosis. All of a sudden, they can tie their shoelaces. More than that, they can get themselves dressed. All of these are published case reports. It's just my long-winded way of saying the brain thrives when it has ketones as a fuel source. But the benefits don't stop there. My lab published a report finding that when humans were in ketosis, which is just a term for ketones being elevated, we pulled out small pieces of belly fat and measured the metabolic rate of that belly fat. And we found that in ketosis, the metabolic rate of that belly fat was three times higher than when the people were not in ketosis. What does that mean? Yeah, so that means that the fat was suddenly behaving in a much more energetic way. That fat tissue has a very low metabolic rate. And then all of a sudden, when the ketones came into them, they started getting much more active and they started burning more energy. 
which is going to be very helpful for someone who wants to lose fat. If your fat cells now have a three times higher metabolic rate, that means that the fat cells are starting to act a little bit more like your muscle cells, and they're just burning more energy. So does that mean that I'm gonna lose fat faster? What yes, does that mean? absolutely, and that is what happens. There are very well done controlled studies to show that if you control for all calories, when a human is in ketosis, their metabolic rate goes up. Your, body, your whole body is just burning more. Um, it, it's just everything's kind of been turned on a little more. The, 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 the furnace of the metabolism has just been, it's, it have a little more fuel kind of stoking the fire. So ketones will increase metabolic rate of fat tissue. We found a paper that we published documenting how we took muscle cells and kind of insulted the muscle cells to determine how tough the muscle cells were. When we incubated the muscle cells with ketones, they were much more resistant to injury. So the ketones act to protect muscle tissue. And in a way that is reflective of a function of ketones. Ketones are a defender of muscle. Ketones are basically the way to tell the brain, saying, brain, you think you need a lot of glucose, and if you don't get enough glucose, you would start stripping the protein from muscle to turn it into glucose. But I'm here as a ketone, so you can eat me instead and, not, and leave the muscle alone. So we published, again, a direct report finding that ketones actually make muscle more resistant to injury. And this could be why you're seeing more and more elite athletes using ketones as an actual ergogenic aid or like a supplement to help them better, uh, be better. So at my university at BYU, just this year, our men's and women's cross country team took the national championships, the best college runners in the nation. Pretty impressive. One of the things they do is they take these ketone drinks before they train and before they, ra they race. Some more and more of the Tour de France teams take ketone supplements because it is just another fuel. It is something that the body can burn, the, that we always say, well, if once you start b running out of glucose, you're going to bonk or you're going to hit the wall. Well, what if you don't really use glucose because you're burning a lot of fat and a lot of ketones instead, and that keeps your glucose kind of untouched or you're not, you're not relying on the glucose? And we see this in humans. If there's an, a human that is adapted to a ketogenic diet, they burn fat at a higher rate than was ever thought humanly possible that that fat is basically fueling all of their muscle uh, movement during the exercise session, rather than relying predominantly on glucose. The body has adapted. It's burning fat for fuel, and when available, it's burning ketones for fuel, and it's leaving the muscle as sort of a last resort when it really needs a big kick. I've seen these keto drinks. These yes. Little, they're almost like little shots. Well, there's a bunch of different types. If you look at the spectrum of ketones, you, on one end you have the cheapest, most readily available, although less effective, called ketone salts, where it takes a molecule of ketone and binds it to a mineral like calcium or magnesium. Um, not as effective, and it's a lot of mineral, so people will find that they may get a lot of plaque on their teeth, yeah. maybe increased risk of kidney stones, so comes with some consequences. Then you have the ketone ester, which often comes in shots. Yeah. Then you have the bioidentical BHB or the bioidentical ketone. One company, which is original ketone, um, they make it. Now, these ones are more effective. You take a little bit of these and you will get an increase in ketones. They're a little more expensive too. It would result, so you're drinking it in, you're immediately absorbing it from your gut. Yeah. So if, if you were not in ketosis, let's say you had, and I'm not encouraging people to do this, you had just eaten two bagels in a, cup of sugary coffee, you're no ketones, undetectable, because insulin has come up, it's inhibited ketone production. And then you drink a shot of the ketone, within an hour, we would detect your ketones. They would have gone up maybe to one millimolar, which is a pretty significant bump. Yeah. And they're capable of that kind of movement. And maybe you do so because you're thinking, I really need to be sharp right now. Would that make me sharper? Well, that's where we have to speculate. There's no, I, my lab published animal evidence suggesting that yes, indeed, it makes you sharper that we had these animals navigate mazes and recognize objects. And when the animals were on a ketogenic diet, they were much sharper. They were much quickly, much better at solving problems and remembering solutions to previous problems. It's one of the, I asked this in particular because I, I, as my team know, because I've said it to them a lot over the last couple of weeks since I've been on the keto diet and I've been literally pricking my finger yeah, to check confirming. My, yeah, yeah. my keto levels. and. The highest I've gotten to is like 2.5. Which is high. Is it high? That's not problematic. Right. I mean, that is just proof positive that you're in ketosis, which itself is proof positive that you're burning a lot of fat. Yeah. 
And three, that your insulin levels are low. That dropped off my body like I've never seen in my life. Exactly. 